Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Helper from the Akron Global Polymer Academy, and today I'd like to introduce you to the world of polymer processing. If you take a look around your house, you'll find numerous items made out of plastic. Have you ever wondered how some of these were made? Well, today we're going to answer that question by taking a closer look at how three common plastic items are made. Let's begin with our jump rope. The plastic rope part was made by a process called extrusion. The extrusion process is similar to what happens in a Play-Doh fun factory. Material is put into a chamber and pressed out through a hole, which is also called a die. The shape of this hole or die determines the shape of the finished product. The machine behind me is called an extruder. Instead of using Play-Doh, it processes plastic pellets like these. Sometimes another substance is added, called a filler, that will tint, strengthen, or enhance the finished product. This process begins by placing the pellets and filler into a feeder, which leads to a hopper. From here, the materials enter a heated barrel, where they are melted. A screw rotates the side of the barrel and pushes the melted polymer out. It also helps mix the melted polymer for consistency. The polymer exits the extruder through a die which determines its final shape. Just like the Play-Doh Fun Factory, different dyes can be used to make different shapes of materials for different products. The extruded material is then moved along a conveyor belt where it cools. Since most polymers are insulators and maintain heat, it's important to allow the material enough time to cool so it can maintain its new shape. If the product is large, like a piece of plastic lumber, a water bath may be used to help cool the material. Fibers can be formed by taking an extruded strand and pulling it before it is completely cooled. This action stretches the material and decreases its diameter. These thin fibers can be used to make items like clothes. And that's how the extrusion process works. Now, let's take a look at how coasters are made. This is an injection molding machine. It actually has an extruder built right into it, and that's exactly where this process begins. The extruder melts and mixes our polymer pellets and additives. Next, the machine injects a small amount of the melted material from the extruder into a closed mold cavity. This mold contains the actual shape of the final product. The entire mold is then cooled down until the part is able to maintain its shape. When it's ready, the mold opens and the product drops out. This process continues until the desired amount of molded products are made, and that's the injection molding process. Have you seen one of these? It's called a balloony, and it gives you a picture of what happens during our next process, which takes melted plastic and blows it into a thin film. The film blowing process also begins by using an extruder to melt and mix a polymer. Next, the melted material is pumped upwards through a circular die. Air is also blown into the polymer, which causes it to blow up like a balloon. This shapes the material into a thin film. A larger film can be created by increasing the air's flow rate. The film cools as it continues to move upward. At the top of the machine is an element called a nib. This is used to press the blown film together, making it flat so it can be rolled up. The rolled up film can then be cut up and used to make products like this plastic bag. And that's the film blowing process. And that concludes our brief introduction to the world of polymer processing. The next time you see one of these common plastic items, you can say, I know how that was made.